Welcome back, everybody. We're not talking East. We're not talking West. We're talking AFC West. James, all you, brother. Thank you, Eric. So last time I did the NFC West. Today, we'll do the AFC West. We're going to start with the Los Angeles Chargers this time. I don't know why they moved from San Diego to Los Angeles because they lost half their fan base, but it is what it is. <laughs> In 2019, they went 5-11. and 11. They really shouldn't have been this bad. They lost nine games by seven points or less and four, lost four games by three points or less. Their net point differential was negative eight. They really could have, they could have easily been a wild card team. Like it was just bad luck on their part. They coached by Anthony Lynn, who is in, going to his fourth year of coaching. In 2019, they ranked 21 in total offense and 14th in total defense. Going into this offseason, their biggest weakness was their offensive line. They haven't had a passing grade higher than 26th since 2014. They went to this year's draft, and they drafted Justin Herbert, a QB out of Oregon, Kenneth Murray, a linebacker out of, out of Oklahoma, and Joshua Kelly, a running back from UCLA. They did lose a lot of big-name guys on this side. They lost um, Philip Rivers. He went over to, uh, to, another, to the Colts. And he's like a <laughs> – he's 30 years old, but he's still pretty productive. Tough year last year. They also lost Melvin Gordon, Derek Watt, Michael Schofield, not the guy from prison break, but the guard, uh, Brandon Meebane, and Thomas Davis Sr. They re-signed Hunter Henry and got Brian Bulaga from the Packers, pretty much one of the best tackles in the league, got him for a steal, amazing, $30 or $30 million. $30 million. They also got Linval Joseph from the Vikings and Chris Harris. Chris Harris is a four-time roller, roller from the Broncos, big-name guy, it's going to be great. My prediction in 2020 is that they go 10 and 6. Like I said before, they really weren't that bad of a team. They were really just a couple plays away from being a 10 and 6 team or a 12 and 4 team. They lost a lot of big name guys, but they're still an elite defense. Like that D line, amazing. You got Joey Bosa, you got Melvin Ingram, and now you got Linval Joseph. And their secondary, with exception of free safety, is top tier. Um, on offense, I think a lot of people are sleeping on Tyrod Taylor. He's an efficient quarterback, he's mobile, doesn't make mistakes. He hasn't been getting that uh, that workload yet, though. And I think here, when he has the love of the coaches and has that opportunity, he's going to shine. And you still also have Austin Eckler, dude, coming out the backfield. He's a monster. What do you guys think? Yeah, uh, I don't know if Tyrod Taylor is going to stick around. Uh, I think if they get off to a poor start, they'll throw Herbert in there. Um, still Keenan Allen, probably a top 10 receiver. Um, you know, probably right around. That number 10. I had him going seven and nine. Um, that defense is legit. Yeah, I think mean, that's kind of all I got to say on the Chargers. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I agree with you, Alex. I think record wise, seven and nine. I just think there's a lot of question marks. They lost Phillip Rivers. Um, James, like you, you did mention, they, they lost a lot of games last year, but by close margins. So I don't think this team was as bad as a lot of people think. Um, so I think they, are, they will be competitive, but I think it's a tough division. Um, I just I, I don't see them finishing with a winning record this year. Yeah, they're going to go 8-8. Eight and eight. But Tyrod Taylor, when's the last time he actually played some minutes? With the Browns. He lost it to Baker Mayfield. Yeah. So we'll see, we'll see how it is, like what Alex is saying, if he has that rusty start or not. That's going to be big for them. Any thoughts, Raiden? I have anything even said. I mean, they're – I, I mean, I wouldn't even be, I'd be surprised if they even made it eight and eight, but I think they're just going to struggle. But, um, you know, so you, you say they're, you know, their defense is solid. So maybe they can pull out a few games, but I don't have very much trust in Tyra Taylor just based on his lack of playtime. I think, I think that's the, that's the big question mark I have. But I mean, I think, I think he's shown some, you know, some glimpses of hope, but. We'll see. Talking about fantasy, uh, as mentioned earlier, you guys hit the nail right on the head. Tyler, Tyrod Taylor is not being drafted. He's only being owned in 3.7% of leagues. So, yeah, not even close. Uh, the big one here is Austin Eckler. His ADP is, run, is 22, running back number 12. He's projected to do 237 points with seven total touchdowns. Um, I think he's being taken a little high here. Uh, he's going to take a step back because Tyrod Taylor is a QB. Tyrod Taylor, Taylor is a mobile quarterback. He's not Philip Rivers. He's not going to check it down every single time. He's going to make plays with his legs. 
So therefore, the reception count, if, especially in PPR league, that's going to go down. Do you guys agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And then uh, Keenan Allen, wide receiver, ADP is 56, going as wide receiver 21. He's projected for 211 points. Right now, he's being he's going after Calvin Ridley and Robert Woods, but before T.Y. Hilton. If you had a chance, would you take Robert Woods or Keenan Allen? Robert Woods. And might take Keenan Allen. I'd take Robert Woods for the fact what you just said about uh, Tyrod Taylor rushing more than throwing. <laughs> Goff is for sure going to throw more than rush, so that alone, I'd pick Woods. Fun That's fact about Keenan Allen, he's been targeted 758 times in his career, and 751 of them were from Phillip Rivers. Brand new quarterback for him, this is going to be different. Very Lastly, nice. you have Hunter Henry, great uh, tight end if you can say hen- healthy. ADP is 97, tight end number nine. He literally catches everything in the end zone when he's healthy. So the biggest question mark is, is he going to stay healthy? Now we move on to the Las Vegas Raiders, another team that went to, that relocated, formerly known as Oakland Raiders, for everybody who didn't know. But 2019, they went seven and nine, coached by John Gruden, who is entering his 14th year of coaching. They were mediocre last year, uh, ranked 24 in total offense and 24 in total defense. Um, their weakness going to the offseason was their secondary. That's been their biggest problem for the decade. Um, they also need some wide receiver help too. You guys remember that whole AB saga? Like they need wide receiver help. So they went into the draft and they drafted Henry Ruggs with their first pick, number 12. That was, a, that was weird for me because in my head, Henry Ruggs III was not the best receiver on the board. Um, the biggest thing about him was that he ran a 4-2-7-40. He's a speedster. But he's not the most physical guy. You need somebody. If you're going to be wide receiver one, you got to be physical. Um, they also drafted Damon Arnett, a cornerback, also in the first round. And then in the third round, they drafted two more wide receivers back-to-back. So like I said earlier, that was their biggest weakness, and they really filled it. Um, players moving on after this offseason is Mike Lennon. If you guys watch Hard Knocks, terrible, terrible quarterback. Funny guy. Um, they're also losing their uh, starting cornerback, Darrell Worley. Montez Burfecht, Carl Joseph as a starter, and Chalir Whitehead, the linebacker, is also gone. They signed Marcus Mariota um, for two years, $17 million. Nelson Aguilar from the Eagles. They got uh, Jason Witten, 38 years old. He's probably not going to do much, but he's a good guy to have in your locker room. Carl Nassib, the uh, math guy from the Browns a couple years back on Hard Knocks. Corey Littleton that we talked about last or two podcasts ago. And Jeff Heath. They also re-signed one of um, Alex's assholes, Richie Incognito, <laughs> to a two-year, $12.7 million deal. He's a really good offensive lineman. Um, my predi- he's prediction is that he's an asshole, but whatever. He's a good offensive lineman. <laughs> my prediction is that the Raiders finish 7-9 and nine again and miss the playoffs. They're trying to start over new. It's just not going to happen, man. They're, they're not a good team. What do you guys think? Yeah, I, I also have the Raiders at 7-9 and nine as well. Um, pretty much agree with everything you said. Um, it's really weird to see the Las Vegas in front of their name. Uh, when I was writing my notes, I wrote down Oakland and had to cross it out and put Las Vegas, even though I literally just read the Las Vegas Raiders. Um, Cause you're ass- dyslexic. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, dope ass, uh, new stadium though in Vegas. Uh, I've been going five and 11. Um, I'm not a big John Gruden guy. Um, I don't really think he's all that impressive. Um, and I've heard he's not, he was not that pleased with Derek Carr uh, when he came in. So I could see if they get off to a poor start, um, giving Mariota a chance, who has been success, successful in this league before. Um, you know, he lost the job in Tennessee to Ryan Tannehill last year. But he has, you know, he brought the Titans to the playoffs before. Um, I think there's a possibility Mariota ends up being um, a bigger factor than we all expect. Um, Josh Jacobs um, will be a fantasy beneficial running back for sure. Um, they should lean more heavily on him. And they, you know, maybe they'll do better than I expect. Uh, like you said, Josh Jacobs, is, Jacobs will be leaned on heavily. Last year, he was injured the majority of it. Um, fantasy value this year, he's going at pick number 21, RB number 10. He's projected at 238 points. I think he might actually go a little bit higher just because I don't know if Derek Carr will succeed. 
which gives way to Marcus Mariota. And Mariota is not – he doesn't throw deep bombs. If he's going to check down, Josh Jacobs is going to get the ball more, a.k.a. more fantasy points. I think he should go higher than his ADP is suggesting. Uh, other than that, you also have Henry Ruggs. He's the only wide receiver worth being drafting for the Raiders. Right now, he's, his ADP is 111 as wide receiver 38. He's projected to go 169 points with five touchdowns. And the biggest name for fantasy in the Raiders is Darren Waller. That guy was a machine last year. Everybody, like, wow. Came up out of nowhere. He has a great story. Great guy. Overcome a lot of drug overdoses. But his ADP is 54, and he's going as tight end number five. Um, he's being drafted before Gronk and after Mark Andrews, which I think is a fair assessment right there. I think that's a really good spot for Darren Waller. What do you guys think? I agree. It's, yeah, it's, it's value. Okay. Sorry. Moving on to Denver Broncos. 2019, they went 7-9. and nine. Coached by Vic Fangio. Had his first year last year. Their offense was horrendous. They ranked number 28. But their defense was stellar. I mean, they're top 10 in defense. The biggest thing uh, for the Broncos heading into the offseason was getting a wide receiver to pair with superstar Cortland Sutton and also cornerback out. And so they did just that. With the pick 15, they drafted Jerry Judy out of Alabama, which I thought was the best cornerback or wide receiver in the draft anyway. He's a refined route runner that can get open at any time. They also uh, drafted KJ Hamler, a wide receiver out of Penn State. He has a 4-2-7-40, but he does have a drop problem. And they drafted Lloyd Cushenberry with his, with a third round pick, and he's a center. Moving on, they lost Joe Flacco. I mean, he didn't do much last year anyway. He played in eight games before going on IR. But they lost a lot of key players on their offensive line. They lost Ron Leary, who was their starting, starting guard, and Connor McGovern, who was their starting center. They also lost Chris Harris, which I mentioned earlier, who's now with the Chargers. They did sign Graham Glasgow from the Lions, a four-year, $44 million deal. He's a really good guard. They got Melvin Gordon from the Chargers, Justin Simmons. Uh, they re-signed. They re-signed Shelby Harris, and they also got A.J. Boye from the Jags. My prediction is that this year they go 9-7. and seven. I think they flipped that record around. I think Drew Locke showed a lot of promise towards the end of the year there, and now he has really good weapons in Jerry Judy and Courtney Sutton, like, Colin Sutton is he's a bona fide superstar. He just hasn't shown any just because he hasn't had a good QB, and I think Drew Locke can uh, provide that for him. They have a decent O-line, but it really just depends on how Cushion Barry, the rookie center, performs. Um, they do have an elite safety combo on Justin Simmons, Cream Jackson, and that D-line with Von Miller still very scary. What do you guys think? I have them going 10 and 6. Um, I think the Broncos are going to be a surprise wild card team. Um, Drew Locke came on with the last five games of the year and surprised some people. And I, um, I think the running back tandem of Gordon and Philip Lindsay still there. Um, the Broncos defense, you know, still anchored by Vaughn Miller. It's getting up there a little bit. Um, I think the Broncos are a sneaky, sneaky team. I think Drew Locke is a sneaky late round QB draft pick that could end up carrying your team later down in the season. Yeah, I agree. There. Um, I have, I, I mean, I would say I see a 10 and six season. Um, again, I think I kind of re- am going to repeat what Alex just said. I'm even probably going to put some money on them winning the, winning the division simply because the, the return for the chiefs is so piddly. I mean, I'll throw, I'll throw, I'll throw a bit of money at them and get a nice nine to one payout. Cause you never know if they can catch fire, see where they go. Fantasy wise, Drew Locke is being drafted at 166 at QB 22. He's only 15% of the league, so if you can, you know, stash him a little bit, he could be good for you. Melvin Gordon, ADP is 41, halfback number 20. He'll likely concede some work to Philip Lindsay, so maybe that ADP is a little high for him. Philip Lindsay is going at 110, RB 38. If you guys can get him that way, right there, that's going to be you're going to win. He's a he's a sneaky sneaky sleeper just because they do that tandem. Colin Sutton is wide receiver 15 at ADP 44. He's going right after OBJ and before Cooper Cup. If you had a chance to choose between Cooper Cup and Corlin Sutton, who would you pick? Cooper Cup, of course, because I believe in Cooper Cup. <laughs> I agree with Eric. Yeah, no, I'd no statistical back. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm gonna. I definitely go my with boy. Corlin Sutton. Corlin, Corlin Sutton all the way. Okay, moving on to the Kansas City Chiefs. They went 12 and four Super Bowl champs last year, coached by Andy Reid. Statistically, phenomenal seasons on both ends of the ball. They're ranked number five in total offense, ranked number seven in total defense. 
they honestly didn't have a weakness going into the draft or this offseason. I mean, they want some depth at cornerback and linebacker, but really not that big of a deal. With the first pick of the draft, they picked up Clyde Edwards Hilaire out of LSU. He's an all-purpose back, and they, I think Andy Reid finally got the guy he wanted at running back. I think he's going to be the dude. He's going to replace Damian Williams. Sorry, man. I love Damian Williams, but this guy, he's going to be the guy. Uh, they also got Willie Gay, a linebacker. He's going to be their starter right off the bat here. They lost LaShawn McCoy, who didn't play much anyway towards the end of the year. Emmanuel Ogba, who also didn't play a lot, and Kendall Fuller. But they did re-sign Patrick Mahomes to this massive 10-year, $503 million deal. They also re-signed Chris Jones, that D-lineman, to a four-year, $80 million deal. I don't know where they're getting the money from, but they're, I, it's blowing my mind how much they can re-sign these guys for. Uh, my prediction is they go 12-4, and four, basically the same, time, same thing they did last year. They pretty much everything have everybody they have on offense the same. So there's not much change there. What do you guys think? I mean, yeah. I mean, let's be real. They're gonna win the they're gonna win the division. They might they're gonna be Super Bowl favorites, I think, too. Yeah, I'm thirteen and three. Um I think Hardman takes a big step forward. Uh I think he probably pushes Sammy Watkins out and he's gonna be the number two guy after Tyree Kill. Uh, so he might be someone I'm targeting in drafts uh, once we get around to fantasy fantasy football drafts for sure. Fantasy football wise, Patrick Mahomes is going at 14, QB number one. He's being drafted ahead of Lamar Jackson. I know that's a that's questionable for some people. What do you guys think? Who do you guys have at, at quarterback, Patrick Mahomes or Lamar Jackson? Well, I had Jackson in our uh, in our picks earlier. I think what he does with his legs um, will end up counting for more. Um, Jackson was QB one last year. Granted, Mahomes got hurt for a little bit. Um, I don't, Mahomes runs, but he doesn't run like Jack. I mean, no one runs like Jackson does, but, um, I don't, you know, if you snag one of the two of them, I don't think you're going to be that upset. Personally, I would take Jackson. Yeah. I I just think Mahomes has more weapons to throw to. And so for me as a quarterback, that's why I would pick, uh, Mahomes over Jackson, but Jackson, like you said, also a great player. You can't go wrong with either one. The one knock I have on that is that Patrick Mahomes did get injured last year because he ran. So I don't think he'll do it as much, which gives the edge to Lamar Jackson, in my opinion. Um, Clyde Edwards Hilaire, the running back, going as running back 17. He's about to be drafted before Lev Bell, David Johnson, Melvin Gordon. That might be a little, be a little too high, but we'll see. Um, Tyreek Hill, wide receiver number five, going out pick number 12. He's being, proje- being drafted before Chris Godwin and Mike Evans. Is that the good, is that the right choice there? Would you draft Tyreek Hill over Chris Godwin? You mean the cheetah, the cheetah Tyreek Hill? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no questions there. And then Travis Kelsey, ADP is seventeen, tight end number one. Yeah, that's pretty much hands down. I love George Kittle to death. George Kittle's my guy, big 49ers guy. But Travis Kelsey will be the number one tight end. Mm-hmm.